Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you are watching yet another episode of Eric Lima's Shenanigans of 1977. It's Wednesday night, and you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the AEW Dynamite Event Center Wrestling Report. And now here's the man to give you that report, Mr. Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima's Shenanigans of 1977. Episode 1,457 of the show, June the 6th, 2024, 1258 p.m. What's going on, everybody? It's almost 1 o'clock. I gotta tell you, it's gonna be nuts, nuts, and more nuts as we go along in June. That's right, we're in, a, in still, in a, in still a second half of the first week of June, first full week of June, as we um, almost approaching summer. In fact, two weeks from today will be summertime, so we have two weeks left of of spring weather. It seems like to me spring has sprung. And but we are in it's gotten to the point where we had to put our air conditioners in right away. A lot the pollen is active big time. There's a lot, lots of yellow stuff on the car, but everything is getting uh washed out as we speak. Birds attack my car again. Jeep is let me tell you, it's nuts. Anyways, um anyways we have a lot to get to um, as you know, the road to Forbidden Door is continuing on. We already had one match for the Forbidden Door event. Uh, like two matches actually are going to be made. I've already been made. Um, one is a ladder match. Um, I don't know how many men will be in ladder. Only eight, a six or an eight-man ladder match for the vacant TNT title. Adam Copeland broke his uh, tibula. Uh, broke his tibula while he was. While well, he wrestled Malachi Black to defend the title, but he had unfortunately he was stripped a bit by the Young Bucks. But Christopher Daniels says, "You know what? Better idea. We're taking that title. We're hanging on a ladder. You're going to earn it." So right now, I believe Kanosuke Takeshita and Mark Brisk, uh, Kanosuke Takeshita, as as qualified for the tournament. I do believe they put Jack Perry in there as well, but I have it has not been confirmed. So we'll see what happens. Um. Also, the um, the um, AEW title is on the line. Swerve Strickland defend against the international champion Will Ospreay, the aerial assassin champion versus champion match at the Forbidden Door. Now, there was a challenge issued by Tony Storm, the AEW Women's World Champion, to Mina Shirakawa. Will that match be accepted? Well, we will find out eventually as I talk about what's going on here. Um, MJF decided to... Um, Kick off Dynamite and uh, addresses uh, everything that's happened in his absence. He's been making fun of a lot of people, roasting people as well. And then Roosh comes out, calls everybody stupid Americans, smelly Americans, on it, stupid. And, uh, and MJF's like, oh, really, you know. And then they got to the ring. They were fighting it out, and security had to separate both of them. I will not be surprised if this matchup happens at Forbidden Door. MJF, you know. This is Long Island, New York. That's his hometown. MJF should be on that show. Him and Roosh, I'll tell you what, I'll take that if that match happens. If I were Tony Khan, I'd make that match. But then again, the Young Bucks will probably screw everything up, as usual. Then the Undisputed Kingdom promo on Swerve Strickland as Roderick Strong will challenge Strickland because he wants... Um, so, he won a title match against Swerve Strickland. The winner of that match would face... On Will Osprey at Forbidden Door, so they were talking about that matchup. First action of the night, the first match of the night, the Fatal Four Way matchup, and whoever wins this matchup will challenge Will Osprey for the international title next week. Orange Cassidy, who has been going through a lot of bull crap at the hands of Trent Beretta and Don Callis since, um, and uh, Kyle O'Reilly, Jay Lethal, and Ray Phoenix. These two, these four guys went at it. And it got to the point where like everybody was getting involved. And Ray Phoenix ended up winning the matchup. He's a former international champion. He'll be challenging Will Ospreay. It'll be a heck of a matchup. Meanwhile, Trent Beretta and Don Callis um, go after Cassidy after the matchup. Cassidy decided to grab a chair when Beretta gra I mean, grabbed a chain while Beretta grabbed a chair. Chris Tatlander stops and then punches Cassidy and walks away. He seems like, And then Willow Nightingale chases... Uh, and Stokely Hathaway addresses Cassidy, and then Willow Nightingale chases everybody away and com and consoles and consoles Orange Cassidy. I will not be surprised if a mixed tag match is going to happen. 
So, Lorne and Tree arrives at the arena, greeting people. Nice um, greeting people, acting like they're nice and cool. You know, the Learning Tree, that'll be Chris Jericho, big, the FTW champion, Big Bill. And the bounty hunter, Brian Keefe, joined up. So, it's good to see the bounty hunter, Brian Keefe, uh, be involved in, in, in the main, in, in Dynamite. That, really, really good. Renee Paquette interviewed Will Nightingale. She's about fed up with everything. And was going to do something about it. And then Orange Cassie comes out and thanks her. So, hey, why the heck not, right? <clears throat> and aligns, aligns himself with, well, Nightingale. Christopher Daniels announces another uh, ladder match qualifier as Mark Briscoe went um, went up against uh, Brian Cage. And Don Callis is scouting the matchup uh, with Kanosuke Takeshita, who is now qualified. And Jack Perry did address um, Mark Briscoe for winning the matchup because Briscoe did end up winning the matchup and the TNT Championship. And, you know, and the TNT Championship. He's going to have to qualify and earn his spot in there unless the Young Bucks want to give it to him. We shall see about that. We now Renee Paquette interview Hook and Samoa Joe. It seems like Hook and Samoa Joe have formed an alliance, and that could be dangerous for anybody that can mess with either one of them. You think about it. Hook and Samoa Joe? Hook, a gener- second generation wrestler, Samoa Joe, one of the most dangerous wrestlers ever. You put those two guys together, and Hook has been trained by the, one of the most dangerous wrestlers, his own father, Taz. You're talking about. You know, where you're talking about, uh, you're talking about an alliance. You're talking about an alliance being formed here. This is great. And then uh, the premier athletes, mainly uh, Aria Davari and Tony Nice, you know, starts making fun of Hook and he says, you still eat that crap and all. That. He was eating Funyuns, and he goes, you still lose matches. <laughs> And, and all of a sudden, Tony Nese slaps the uh, Funyuns out of his hands, and Hook went to go out to them, and the smoke goes, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We'll, we'll take them on on our terms. Got it? And then they both, you know, they do the fist bump. I'm like, Samoa Joe and Hook, yes, sir. Let me have that. That would be great. <laughs> cook. Cook, gentlemen. Cook. Let me tell you. Anyways. Then, uh, let's see. What do we uh, have here? Then uh, the Learning Tree talks to 2.0, and, you know, he's, he's my favorite people. You, Matt Menard, taking over for a rampage on commentary. That's awesome. And you uh, being finally getting married and having a baby on the way. That's really good. And, really, and, <laughs> and then Brian Keith just looks at, looks at Angela Parker. You better start respecting Jericho. They both look at him like, what the heck is going on? Anyways. Anyway. And as Renee Paquette interviewed uh, Square Strict, uh, actually, um, the acclaims were about to come out, and, and Max Cass about to do his rap, and then uh, the young Bucks decided, "We're cutting your segment." You cutting your segment. You forget, you know, you guys think you can run things. You forget who the acclaim has. One of the one of the members of the DX Army from back in the day. And one, th- if, if anybody knows how to uh, buck against authority, no pun intended. It would be Billy Gunn. I don't know what the heck the Young Bucks were thinking on that. And if I were the Acclaim. So he decided to cut the Acclaim segments. And everybody's like, thank you. And all that. Shut up, people. I don't like the Young Bucks. Those card-carrying members of the Beavis and Butthead fan club. And you got Beavis and Butthead, Nicolette. You know, Nick, I'm glad that Nick decided to grow a full, full, Nicholas decided to grow a full beard. Because that other beard that he had, he looked so ridiculous with it. You know, you know you're making Austin Aries look bad. That's, I'm sorry. That's that. Uh, and you got, yeah, Nicholas and Max D. Jackson are a Beavis and Butthead. And you got, you know, Jack Perry, you put a pair of glasses on him, give him a guitar, and have him sing about lesbian seagulls. You got Mr. Van Dreesen. Then you got Kajusko Okada with that blonde hair. You put a black t shirt on him and, a, and a, his hand shorts. He would look like Stuart. Uh, like their dumb friend Stuart. But he, if, if Tony Time was Tony Stuart, ever fire Luther as a Luther as, as her butler? Hey, put him with the, the elite, and you can be Mr. Van, uh, Mr. McVicker, Principal McVicker, Beavis and Butthead. All you need now is uh, all you need now is Ray Lloyd get the uh, the buzz cut, and it, it'll be it'll be it'll be Coach Buzz cut. 
We're going to talk about the penis and the vagina. <laughs> and, and, and they have Nicholas Mackey Jackson going, you know, and not laugh. Anyways, me, <laughs> me, I go on. And then Renee Puckett interviewed Square Strickland. Now Strickland is going to, um, oh, Strickland is going to defeat Roderick Strong and then move on to Will Ospreay. That's going to be a heck of a match between those two at the Forbidden Door. There's another match adding at the Forbidden Door. I forgot to mention, Mercedes Monet will defend the TBS title against CMML's, um, against New Japan, against the New Japan Strong Women's Champion, Stephanie Vacare, who will put that title on the line. So it's title for title, winner take all. Looks like Mercedes Monet's getting the title that she lost, trying to get that title lot that she lost back. Meanwhile, an eight-man tag team match on Atomico's match from Mexico. The Blackpool Combat Club making its return in full force. The IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, John Moxley. Joining, for, joining up once again with Brian Danielson and Claudio Castagnoli in the returning Ring of Honor Pure Champion, Wheeler Yuta. Going up against Volador Jr. from CMLL. Volador Jr., Magnus, Rugido, and Esfinge. And, um, and, and the Blackpool Combat Club wins the match. Chris Jericho decides to help someone how to scoop chicken and dumplings in the catering area. That's funny. Dan Garcia decided to go back to his roots in Buffalo, New York, in the, uh, I think it was Wrestlers Anonymous. That's what, you know, the training school that he went to. And he's trying to think about becoming the international champion. That's good on him. The claim confronts the young Bucks while, while security was trying to, if I, if I, if I were Billy Gunn, and we go going pulling prank, Billy Gunn should be thinking about pulling practical jokes and pranks on the young Bucks. Like, like DX would do to Vince McMahon. They should do the same thing to the Young Bucks. Have somehow chase the Young Bucks out of the arena. Have them take over production or something like that. Or or let or uh, and ask to or or have to or go to Tony Khan and Christopher Daniels. They should be going to those two two kind dudes instead of the other two idiots members of the Beavis and Butthead fan club, Nicholas and Matthew Jackson. And they they listen to that dingle nut Dave Meltzer. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, might I digress? Um, then the patriarchy was talking about uh, talking to the young bucks about you know Christian Cage getting a title shot. Said, yeah, we like you guys. So the young bucks and the patriarchy joining forces. Oh boy, we're in trouble. And in the next matchup, timeless Tony Storm, the AW Women's Champion, joined on commentary as Mariah May takes on Soraya in a battle of Brit babes and. Uh, Soraya ended up winning by submission, but then they decided to attack uh, to attack Mariah May. Tony Storm decided to get in the ring and help out Mariah. They were beating up her on her until Mina Shirakawa comes to fight them off. And they were about to go at it, and Mina Shirakawa is trying to do do her thing. And, to, and Tony Storm, in fact, that match will be happening at the Forbidden Door. Another matchup happening, the AEW Women's title on the line. As the artist of starting champion... Uh, one third of that of that crew that would be Mina Shirakawa to challenge the timeless one Tony Storm for the AEW Women's Championship. You know what made me happy? That's the only thing that made me happy is last night seeing Harley Cameron, Mina Shirakawa, and Tony Storm all on the same show. I'm happy about that. They're my three favorite ladies of AEW, aka Stardom, um, uh, and slash Stardom. Anyways. The Learning Tree decided to talk to the private party. Maybe he wants to join up. Maybe the private party may be thinking about it. We don't know. And they have Cheesecake, their head security guy. And then Brian uh, Danielson uh, was addressing how proud he is of Willie U Wheel of Utah coming back from his injury to pick up the victory for his team. And then he decided to, in, in his final year of wrestling, full-time, he wants to enter the Owen Hart Tournament. And I think that's a great idea. Entering the Owen Hart Tournament and trying to get a world title shot there. And then, thinking of the world title shot, Roderick Strong, former international champ, challenging Swerve Strickland, and uh, Strickland ended up retaining the title and ended up celebrating with the fans and then going a dancing granny. And she's doing one of this. Trying to do the Swerve Drive. It was really cool. Anyways, that's all the time we have on this show. Episode 1457 of Eric Lee Machine Against 1977 AEW Dynamite. Event Center 4, the 5th. Of June yesterday, last night, 
2024. Up next, pressure luck. Will I retain my title, or will those whammies get to me again? We'll find out. Until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode. This is your announcer speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget Productions. And in association with a Raven Bow for Telepictures and Distribution. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tune in next time for another episode of Earthly Machine Anigans of 1977. Goodbye for now.